Well, at last we've got him in our studio. A in lad, the studio. A man from Old Blighty who's sold over 100 million albums worldwide, is an inductee into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and about to be inducted again. But we'll, we'll right. let him tell us about that. Now, good morning. Thank, thanks for joining us, and we really appreciate you coming in. Rob. Coming in. I've come into the oh, studio. Yeah. Thank you, yes. We are, we are wrapped. Now, the Rock and Roll Fame again, of course, this time with the faces. Well, it's the, the faces and the small faces. Great. Um, so, uh, yeah, it'll be twice for me, twice for Ronnie Wood, because he's in as a Rolling Stone. Yeah. And I'm in as a solo artist. That, so that's absolutely doesn't, brilliant. Doesn't happen very often. It's, it's amazing. Like, you know, before you, you, you were solo, of course, and a lot of people in our audience may not remember that there was the Jeff Beck group where you were, of course. That's right. And, yeah. then, and then the, the faces. Yeah. And, and in the 70s, you were running in tandem. You know, not only were you in the faces, but, you know, you were doing your solo stuff. And, and all your hits started happening with Reason to Believe, Every Picture Tells a Story from that album, Mandel and Wind. And in tandem, one of my all-time faves, and not as good as a wink to a blind horse, yeah. I used to thrash around the plinth. Did you? Like, oh, I love that track. <laughs> that was just one of the beauties. So how was it in those days? For it you? was busy because I think we were making, or I was making three albums in a year. You know, but uh, when one is a lot younger, one has the mental and physical <laughs> strength to do it. Actually, I've done two albums this year. I've got a yeah. studio album coming out pretty soon and Brilliant. a Christmas album and a book. Oh, so it's great. actually got nothing and to do with age. I was going to do a fitness video as well. <laughs> well you it's should, about, it's, actually. It's, a, it's about time you did a book. <laughs> oh, it's great. I read the um, first two chapters last night, which is, you know, about when I was growing up. And I was in my room crying my eyes out, you know, because it brought back so many memories just, it's tremendous. It'll be out at Christmas. So where did you grow up? Uh, in North London, in Highgate, just at the end of the war. The bombs were still dropping on London. <laughs> 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 well, as you were establishing your solo career, I believe you sang guest vocals on an Australian band that I'd never heard of called Python Lee Jackson. Shame on Is you. it true you got paid in car seat covers? That's true, yeah. It was, um, <laughs> it was a mate of mine who used to work for Marcus Cars over sports cars and... Uh, he was managing the band, and the singer apparently couldn't handle the uh, the song, mm -hmm. so I agreed to do it. And uh, I said, "Well, get, he said, well, we got any money? You know, it's an unknown band." He said, "Give me a set of carpets for me car," and it became a huge hit after Maggie May mm -hmm. became a hit. Then they released it as a single, and that became a number one single too. Right, and yeah. it was just massive for you in the seventies. I mean, one hundred million albums. It's it's and actually twice that. Is it twice that now? Well, no, it's well over well, that's what 200 million. Quoting. I can't fathom 200 million anything. It's just amazing. So the 70s were, were great for you. And then fast forward to uh, 1994 when Jeff Beck is the one who inducts you into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, my uh, arch enemy and sometimes friend. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a, we're like chalk and cheese, us two. You is know? that right? I think we, we adore each other as musicians, but when it comes to personalities, it's a bit of a clash okay. there, and always have been. I, I'll always speak highly of him as a musician, though. So how would it be at, the, at this induction at the Hall of Fame? Well, I think Jeff Beck was supposed to do it, but um, I, I don't know. You know, Well, all the faces will be there, um, you know, minus the ones that are dead. <laughs> so <that's>, <laughs> um, and it's on April the 14th, and oh, we'll right. probably do two or three numbers. Fantastic. It's unfortunate that it's not shown around the world it's not even broadcast though. it's a it's a shame that really, it is a it? shame yeah, yeah. yeah all the other yeah. awards things are yeah i see how it's 200 million now because by 2002 you'd sold over 100 million records yeah. and yeah. that was before the release any of uh, of the great american songbook mm. albums which has probably reached a whole new audience have, yeah. have you loved that experience yeah absolutely it, it came about as um as a work of love really because mm -hmm. i grew up with all those songs you know with my parents and my brothers and sisters and so I did it just uh, well, you know, get off my chest, and lo and behold, yeah. it, the first one became a hit, so I did another four, five yeah. altogether. It must be fun to record. I can't oh, imagine they, that it would be. Real, they really are a challenge yeah. You yeah. Know, for any singer. because Where did not. you record those, Rod? Or well, in the States. Yeah. You know, invariably, I wasn't even in the studio when the vocal, I mean, when the tracks were done. The tracks were all done in New York, and I did the vocals in, uh, in Los Angeles. Now, the other thing, uh, let's get back to the tour. This tour, of course, is Rod mm -hmm. Stewart, the hits, which is, Great for the fans. Now, you, you did this in Hyde Park recently to a massive crowd? Yeah, I think we had um, 40,000, 50,000 in Hyde Park. Fantastic. And uh, I'm also doing Vegas now, which I'm thoroughly enjoying at Caesars, uh, oh, right. Caesars Palace. It's, it's, it's just wonderful. People have this thing of, you know, Las Vegas. They remember it like it used to be with Elvis, you know, mm. people having dinner and watching the show. It's not like that anymore at all. It's tremendous. It's the best theater in the world to mm. see a show. It's really great. So I'm busy. Amazing things happening there. They have three Cirque du Soleil shows or something going at once. Yeah, it's it is amazing. Entirely different. 
Have you been there? No. <laughs> I want have to. Been, I have, but a long, long time long ago. Time. Yeah, yeah, it's changed a lot. I bet it has. Oh, yeah. man. It's, I, it's I was, wonderful. I went there in the 70s, yeah. Oh, you did? It's wonderful for a weekend. It really yeah. is. I mean, that's a long way to go from here for a weekend. Yeah, it looks like a bit of fun, though. Yeah. He's in the States. They should try and get Actually, to the Vegas. man who's on the camera behind, behind mm. the camera at the moment, he's been to Vegas recently. Mm. Did yeah. you get in trouble? Yeah. <laughs> I can tell by that face. Uh, now, just, uh, I, we're all looking forward to the concert, but we can talk a bit of football. So uh, it's Man U and Man City, top of the. English Premier League. Well, I'm at the not moment. really a fan of the English. Have Premier you gone off it now? Have you? Scottish football. Oh, okay. So Celtic, Celtic yeah. yeah. Mm. So we got a game on Saturday, and they kick off just as I hit the stage. So the promoter, <laughs> your man Kadinsky, is arranging to have a have a TV input by the side of the stage so I can watch it. <laughs> keep enough. dashing off. Excellent. And there'll be plenty of people that'll want to be updated. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's a, there's a lot of Celtic supporters here, but it won't sure. interfere with the show, folks. No, you know, not unless they lose. <laughs> And the show's all about the hits. So what yeah, could, more I mean, or less. How do you narrow it down to what you can play in that amount of time? This is what always amazes me when someone is as prolific as yourself. Mm. It's, is it tough? Because you must um, think, oh, I'll never get out alive if I don't play that. And well, then, oh, certain, something's got to give. Yeah, and... There's about 12 <laughs> songs that, that I do have to play. You yeah. Know, Maggie Maid, You Think I'm Sexy, Tonight's yeah. Night, Hot Legs, oh, it goes on and on. And then uh, it's, uh, I don't. You know, I don't. I want to please the audience, but I want to please myself too. Yeah. The audience come first. Yeah. So, and it is a hit show. There's no American songbook. Mm -hmm. We don't do any of that stuff. Yeah. It's a very lively show. There's 15 in the band. Great. Six mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. A record, That's I'd imagine. Excellent. That's excellent. excellent. We did a show in Paris the other night, and the promoter, as we came off, he said, oh, sexy band. <laughs> so that's what I call my band now, sexy band. Sexy band. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> I uh, think you should please yourself, and then the audience will be. They can't oh, help the but audience be pleased. Pay my wages. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mean, you're you're in good nick. How do you keep yourself in such good shape? Uh, well, I just, oh, thank you. <laughs> well, I do. I do <laughs> work at it. You know, I was in the but gym you, this morning. Do you still is, play, play football? football? Oh yeah, I play for um, playing California in a vets league. You know, it's over fifties. When mm. I say vets league, people think it's people that look after dogs and cats. <laughs> <laughs> you keep having uh, kids, so you've got someone to kick a that's ball true. around. Yeah, with. yeah. They, so this is the key young. to it. Yeah, yeah. They, they do actually. I mean, I'm at my age. I'm so honoured to have a to have a you know a year old. He'll be a year when we're in Sydney. Uh, he's just Bonnie, and so, and they'll be all here tomorrow. They all come in tomorrow. Oh, fantastic! So there's eight kids all together. It's. Uh, it's hard work keeping them all happy. You know, you, you've got to be like eight different dads because they're all different ages. Yeah. You know? mm. yeah. Now, you're the second major star that I've met that's into model trains. Get away. Who's yeah. the first? Neil Young. Neil. Have, yeah, I know about Neil. Have yeah. you ever, uh, you know, compared notes with Neil no, on, no, on trains? No, no, no. The only one I um, keep in contact with that has the same hobby is Jules Holland. Oh, he does as well. Yeah, we uh, email each other about really? the layout. Yeah. yeah. Well, I first uh, I spent some time with Neil way back in '85, and uh, his son Ben, who has cerebral palsy, mm. he wanted to get into trains with him, and then he really developed things so that Ben, who has limited movement, could actually operate this oh, thing. And he's bless got him. it in one of his barns on his on his Tremendous. ranch, and it's it's just brilliant. And uh, and I think he even bought into this at the Lionel company. Yeah, Lionel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He actually yeah. bought into That's that. Right. I think he's one of the major owners of that. Yeah, it, it's a wonderful hobby. You know, a lot of people. Snigger at it, but it's it's no different from collecting stamps or really, yeah. no. reading a book. It's yeah. it's. I mean, I take it on the road with me. Oh, do you? Yeah, I have great big trunks full of stuff, and wow, and I build projects. You know, I build a building, and it's it's strange when room service come up and they see this <laughs> dining table full of tools and paints and bits of wood and <laughs> like. Shouldn't you be I'm throwing our telly off the balcony? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear. But I've always been, you know, even when I was in the faces and I was throwing televisions out the windows, I was still building model railways. Balance, I, was just, yeah. I just kept it quiet. But now I'm old enough to come out with it, you know, come out the closet. You know, after all this, uh, with the excitement, uh, I've got to, we, we could, we'll probably have to edit the interview a little bit. But can I just go? Why? And, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I just go and get something that I brought in? Yeah, sure. I won't yeah. be one sec. All right. <laughs> come on, next one. Ask me a relevant question. Come on. <laughs> I got a, given this as a gift by uh, the chairman of Village Roadshow a few years ago. Five guys. Ah, oh, it's tremendous. Yeah, five yeah. guys walk into a bar. Yeah. And it's a four uh, disc set. Yeah. That is, I get goosebumps thinking about it. I mean, it makes not, you laugh too, doesn't no, it? It's brilliant. There's the stories in here, but the stuff you recorded for the BBC. That mm. is amazing stuff, yeah. and you did that regularly, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we did. It's. Uh, 
it, it's, it's some good stuff, and especially if you listen to the original recording of Maggie May. Yeah, I well, have. I didn't, um, I didn't have any lyrics. Mm. The track is the same as you hear nowadays, but I didn't have any lyrics. I was just making up anything, you know. I mean, there are people on here who, who say that you were punks before the punk movement even, ever, ha- ever happened in those days. Well, I, I suppose in our way we were. We didn't give a damn, you know. We, we were, and we, got, we did drink a lot, you know, and that's because we had no confidence in ourselves. So we thought, well, let's get drunk and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> way to go. And it was a big success, and, you know, everybody wants the faces to get back together, you know, but it's, it'll never be like it was as long as people remember that's that. That's true, yeah. You know, as long as the audience remember that, because they were all drunk as well. <laughs> they might be in for a shock. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I, I read, you know, when you were doing the BBC shows, you were actually down at the pub, oh, and I think yeah. John Peel was the front man, and you would just leave 10 minutes before to go be live oh, on air. Oh, less than that, <laughs> yeah. And you know, all, their, all the guys were trying to get us out, the BBC people trying to get us out of the studio, and say, no, one more drink. And all of a sudden we go, come on, lads, run around the corner, play guitars on, and just as it went to, I think, 10 o'clock, we went on live, and we were there, and we played. Well, it's a, it's a great set of music. If anybody wants to uh, hear this, it's called Faces Five Guys Walk Into a Bar. It's a four-disc set that has just got some gems on it. Speaking of gems, uh, it's it's been a real pleasure talking to you, Ron. It has. And, uh, now there are...